that little feedback going. <laughs> Welcome to Overflow Christian Center Live. Kind of get my feedback going. All right, praise God. I think we're good. I think we're good. It kind of just needed to warm up a little bit. But praise God, we're here back for another Sunday. To God be the glory. We're so excited to have you guys and be with you once again. We miss you terribly. Uh, and uh, But we'll be together again. We just got to stay positive. Keep our confession um, sure. And make sure that we are telling everybody to keep our confession, a positive confession, so that we can get back together again. Amen? All right. So listen, if this is you, I need you to like Share this live, share it everywhere. Tell everybody that we are on. Overflow Christian Center is on and we're live and we're ready to minister to you. So if you are ready, I'm ready. Let us go to the Father in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this day. We thank you, Father, for your loving kindness and your tender mercies we see each and every day. Thank you, Lord, for everything, the breath that we breathe. And we thank you, Father, for being able to see, to be able to touch, use our senses today. But first, but but most of all, Father, we thank you for our faith, our mountain moving faith. Thank you, Father, for all all that you have given to us you we thank you father that we have all things richly to enjoy we have health and wealth and we are we grow in godliness in you father because for it is in you that we live it is in you that we move and it is in you that we have our being thank you father for all things father we worship we praise you we give you the glory we thank you father and we bless you oh god thank you lord for a new day god that you have made and we consciously rejoice and we are glad in it now god take control of this life take control of everything you see and hear and that is done today we thank you lord that the word of God will come forward and come to those who need to hear a word from you. We thank you for deliverance now, Father, for those who have habits that need to be broken. And we thank you for deliverance for those who are suffering from depression and anxiety. For Father, you said in your word to be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication, we make our requests known to you, Father. For you said, God, when we do that, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it guards our hearts and our minds through you, Christ Jesus. For Father, we believe you. We believe your word. We stand on your word today. We don't stand on anything else, but we stand upon the rock, the rock, which is you, Jesus, our sure foundation. Now, God, take control, Father. We thank you for our pastor, Pastor Billy Marshall. We thank you, Father, that you touch him, Father, now from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. We thank you for the vision that you've given to him today. And we thank you, Lord, for the words that come out of his mouth. They are not coming from you. You, but they come from the Holy Spirit who is resting and ruling and abiding in him now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to teach him your word so that he can teach us so that we can be overcoming Christians, zealous and on fire for you. Thank you, Father, for each and every person at Overflow Christian Center and all of our family and friends. We worship and we praise you for keeping them. We glorify you. We give your name all the praise in the matchless name of Jesus. Let everyone say amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, oh my. Oh, that is so crazy, but you can't see me. That is so wild. All right. Praise God. So listen, pastor's going to come with us and he's going to talk about our birthdays and uh, then we're going to move on and I'm going to make sure you can see me. You, you need to see me. <laughs> praise God. Come on, pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
I, um, you know, we having a little technical difficulties, uh, but we'll get it straight down in just a moment. Um, uh, I do want to wish everybody a happy birthday. Happy birthday to everybody. Uh, a very special birthday. I want to shout out to my, my oldest brother. <laughs> he is uh, my big brother, big brother Doug. And um, I, I honor God for, I know it's the 19th. It's not today, but it is the 19th. This, was, we, this is the 15th. Yeah. So it's this week. It's this week. You're right. Okay. Now. All right. I, stand correct. I'm sorry. Uh, they made me think that it wasn't. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait. No. It's not today. Today is the 15th, but it is the 19th of November. And so I just wanted to wish him a very happy birthday. God bless you, brother. I love you dearly. And um, uh, I, just, I just admire you in so many different ways. God bless you. And so anybody and everybody else that is sharing a birthday today, uh, through this week, today, through this week, I just want to say happy birthday to you. I mean, man, what an awesome time. You're still here among the living. You're still here with us. And we praise the Lord. We give God glory. We honor God for it. And um, you need to go out and celebrate yourself. Uh, don't wait for somebody else to celebrate you. Celebrate yourself. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. We thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. We love him. We love God and we love you. And happy birthday once again. And if anybody has, has, uh, has anybody celebrated an anniversary, uh, happy anniversary to you. We love here at Overflow Christian Center to celebrate marriages. And we thank God for marriages. And and we honor God for you and your marriage. Amen. Amen. Keep up the good work. Keep on doing the thing. Keep on, keep on trusting each other. Keep on moving in um, the faith of God. And remember, you can make it. You can make it. Don't say you getting a divorce. <laughs> say you going to make it. Praise Amen. the Lord. And celebrate year after year after year. Every year I speak it over you and your marriage. Every year will be better than the year before. Amen. And so we thank God for you and your marriage. Amen. We thank God for you. So um, we are going to now uh, check right back in with First Lady uh, for announcements. So stay tuned. Make sure you get your pen and paper. Make sure you write it down because then you're going to be like, I don't remember. What did you say? What happened? Who's doing what? Where were we going? Who's that? Where, where is that? What time? What place? Mm -hmm. where, you know, who, what, where, and when. Write it down. Amen. So that don't, don't depend on your memory. Write it down. Mm -hmm. A lot of things go on through, throughout the week, and, and people forget. They just honestly forget. But you, you need to write it down. Make sure that you don't forget. Mm -hmm. Post it somewhere that you'll remember. Amen? So at this time, we're going um, to head over and... View our announcements. Thank you for joining Overflow Christian Center, and here's your announcements for today. Don't forget about our prayer focus and our individual prayer assignments here at Overflow Christian Center. Corporate intercessory prayer is traditionally held every first Friday of the month. Our next virtual intercessory prayer on Facebook Live will take place on Wednesday, November 18th at 8 p.m. Prayer requests can be sent to our email address at overflowchristiancenter at gmail.com. Always remember, prayer changes things, but you must pray. Join us for our 2020 Black Tie Christmas Gala, which will be held on Saturday, December the 19th at 7 p.m. at the beautiful Eastwood Manor in the Bronx. We will be celebrating our fifth year in ministry. It's a year of celebrations. Please send payments via Zelle in the amount of $110 per adult and $55 children five and up. Children zero through five years old is free. 
Good news! We've extended the deadline for all final payments to be made by December the 4th. There is a 50 ticket minimum and we will be following the CDC guidelines of social distancing and wearing masks to this event. Please contact us for further information because you don't want to miss this awesome time of fellowship. So come on, get in, get into the overflow. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications to be notified for every video posted on our YouTube channel, Overflow Live. And there ends our announcement. Have a blessed day. Praise the Lord. Those are great announcements, right? Amen. Um, uh, so govern yourself accordingly to those announcements, okay? Uh, make sure you get your payments in. Make sure you do whatever you need to do um, uh, via the announcements because it's important. And uh, that's the reason why we have announcements, so that you can know what's going on and that you can follow um, the guidelines of the ministry and, and, mm -hmm. and be a part of the things that we are doing. Uh, now, guess what? Yes. Guess what time it is? It's time for the announcement. I mean, the announcements, yeah. the, the offering. Yeah. Uh, listen, listen, this is very important because this is God giving you another opportunity to get involved in what he's doing in the earth realm. This is a time where God is, is allowing you to partner with him in this ministry. We bless the Lord. We bless you for, for being a part of this ministry. Now is the time. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. God. While the anointing is flowing, while God is moving, while we are making this plea, I'm asking you now. For the Bible says, given it shall be given unto you good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall he cause men to give into your bosom. God will never let a seed go sown without an increase coming to you. Yeah, I know. You say, well, Pastor, I've sown seed, and I've sown seed, and I've sown seed, but I don't seem like I'm getting a harvest. Keep waiting. Don't, don't give up on your seed. Don't dig it up. Keep waiting. Keep believing. Keep confessing. Because you know what is going to happen. A farmer don't go out to the uh, into the into the field that he planted seed and be like, "Where's that crop?" No, he has to wait for it. He has to wait. And so, so do you. The Bible says, "As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest." So listen, if it's seed time, it's seed, and then it's time, and then it's harvest. You cannot plant seed and not get a harvest. I'm going to say it again. You cannot plant seed and not get a harvest. The Bible says as long as the earth remains seed, time, and harvest. Harvest have to come. Oh, man, as long as you're on the earth, the harvest have to come. Praise the Lord. So that's, that's great news. And then the Bible tells us to bring all your tithes into the storehouse. Your tithe. Tithe is a 10% of your earning, your increase. It is important for you to come in and bring in what you have earned out there in the world. God is giving you the power to get wealth. All he's requiring of you is to give him 10%. Don't be a God robber. Nobody here at Overflow Christian Center is a God robber. Amen. Get your tithes and your offerings in. We bless it all. Now, do it now. Take a minute. Take a minute. Do it now. Don't wait. Don't wait. Do it now. Praise the Lord. We give God glory. We honor God. We praise the Lord and we, uh, and we bless you. We bless you for being obedient to the word of God. Amen. That's very good. Um, and so right now we're going um, to we're going to pray over your offering. And and we're going to give God glory for your offering. Amen. All right. Dear Father God, I thank you for these that are sowing uh, into your ministry, into this ministry. We thank you, dear Father God, that they're not God robbers, but they're bringing their tithes, their offerings, and their gifts of love to you. And Father God, we thank you for receiving them, Lord. I thank you that they're coming with a cheerful gift to you, that they're happy and hilarious to give to you. And Father God, and you'll bless them accordingly because your word declares that you have, you, you are able to make all grace abound towards them, that they, they can be fruitful in 
every good work and, and that they may be a blessing to every good work that, they're, that they, they may choose. And, and God, we praise you, we honor you, and we give you glory for it. And Father, now we thank you for the windows of heaven and blessings. We thank you, God, for the angels being loosed now to bring in their increase. Oh, my God, this year shall be a year of abundant overflow. Yes, I said it, I said it, I stand by it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, supernatural increase and abundant of overflow in 2021. I'm telling you, you need to connect, you need to stay in the flow of Overflow Christian Center because there is an abundance of coming, there's an abundance. You think you haven't seen, I don't care how much you've been blessed, I don't care how many promotions you had, but God is going to do something that is more than you can ever think in your tired being he's going to bless you so much there's going to be an overflow of abundance abundance of overflow coming to you you need to say it. you need to write it down you need to put it somewhere yeah. that you can see it daily because it is coming if you expect it if you confess it if you if you depend on it if you depend on it and make put pressure on the word of god because god's word is true amen, amen. we bless the lord for it we thank you lord in Jesus' name. And, and don't forget our new um, uh, offering code is uh, ONL, which is Overflow New Location. Uh, if you want to sow into that, please mark it as ONL. Uh, that is going to go for our, our, um, our new location. We are searching for a new location. So therefore, and for those of visitors that are catching me now by way of, of, of YouTube or uh, Facebook or wherever you're, you're streaming this in to, uh, or you're picking this up from, uh, if you want to be a blessing to us, you, you can please do so. And you can say, I, I, I want to help them uh, by helping us. You're, 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 you're being a blessing to us and God will bless you for it. Amen. We thank you and we, we praise God for you. Amen. So uh, I, I thank God for you. And remember, promotions increase are coming to you this week in Jesus' name. Believe it and receive in Jesus' name. Amen. I love a mini day of the week.
our devotion pour it out pour it out on the feet of Jesus Jesus, God bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for Minister CC. Hallelujah! What an awesome ministry, awesome song. Okay, I'm just saying something just in case it catch. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for Minister CC. the Lord. Put it back on. It's on. It's just on. It's on. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Testing one, two. Okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, bless the Lord. Uh, we we we're gonna uh, we're gonna get right into our message, and uh, let us pray. Uh, dear Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you, thanking you and blessing you and and honoring you and giving you all glory. Thank you, dear Father God, for being with us. Thank you for 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 allowing me to have another day, another chance, another another uh, opportunity to to glorify you in this earth realm. I thank you for that. But now, Father, I'm asking you to hide me behind my Lord and my Savior, Jesus the Christ, and let him be heard, be seen, and um, uh, and we cover it with him now. We cover it with him now to give him all the glory and all the praise. For, Father, we are a witness that he's alive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you died and you, and you rose and you're coming again. And I bless you for that. And now, dear Lord Jesus, uh, you said in your word that the Holy Spirit, he will lead us and guide us into all truth, that he will be our teacher. Yes. So, Father, I'm asking you for your great spirit, and we welcome him here this day. 
for him to lead us and guide us into all truth. For Jesus told us that he would do such a thing. For we understand that this is his dispensation of time. And we honor him for this. Uh, so I'm asking you to speak through my, my lips and think through my mind. For I totally yield myself to you in this hour in my life. And now, Father, we loose the powers of heaven, the angels themselves, into this area, uh, over this live, and into the homes and the people that are tuning in now. And we bless you for them, and that they will bring about the will of the Father. And the enemy cannot stop, prevent, block, or hinder not one person from receiving what the word of the Spirit of the Lord has to say. In Jesus' name, we give God glory. Amen. Well, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be in my mouth. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I give God glory for it in Jesus name. Now, um, uh, we once again, we thank God. We thank God. Thank you, uh, Dr. C.C. for that wonderful uh, uh, selection. And I, I honor God for you and, and your wonderful voice in ministry. I uh, thank God for you in Jesus' name. Uh, now, I, I want to get right into it because I, I, I want to <laughs> be able to cover some, some new things. Um, so let, let me just start. Go to 2 Timothy, our foundation of Scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. And you should know it by now, for we've been reading it every Sunday. Uh, for the last, I don't know how many weeks we've been doing this now, but but know this, that that in the last days, perilous times will come. I mean, you've got to be blind or dishonest not to see that. Yeah. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blaspheming, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying his power, and from such people turn away. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, as, as horrible as this list is, as, as horrible as this is, for this is, this, this time frame that we're in now is the age of the church. It is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. This is the church's age right now. Oh my God. So, so in the church age, in the last days, this is what's going to happen with people. And you can see it clearly. Uh, just if you, don't, if you don't see it, just turn on the news, you'll see it. Uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, it says then, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Now, the reason why I keep reading this is because this is vital. This is what the church was supposed to be doing. This is what the church is supposed to be doing. Jesus said, upon this rock I built my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. It cannot prevent, it cannot stop the church from going forth and doing what it has to do. Now, now we need to be going out there and preaching the word, not preaching our 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 experience, not preaching our, 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 our religion, not preaching our, um, our church doctrine. Mm -hmm. Preach the word. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say that enough. I don't think the Holy Spirit is going to be able to say it enough for you to get it because he's, he keeps saying it over and over and over again. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth. My God, they'll turn their ears away from the truth. If you turn your ear away from the truth, the only other option is to hear a lie yeah. <sighs> and be turned aside to fables. You know, you know, there's a lot of people that's going after statues and worshiping statues. And, and this is all a part of the end time events. This is all a part of the end time days. Uh, witchcraft will, uh, will begin to uh, uh, explode. <laughs> 
uh, an abundance of a ways and, and people would begin to worship the Egyptian type of rule where they begin to wor worship statues and things like that. You'll see it. And I mean, you probably have seen it. And, you know, people start worshiping the, the creature rather than uh, uh, the, the creature rather than the creator. You know, the universe was created. I don't know if you know that or not, but it was created. And you stop talking to the universe. Stop asking the universe to do stuff for you. Stop asking the universe to line yeah. itself up yeah. and telling you to do. Stop doing that. You need to talk to God. Amen. God is the one who created the universe. Come on. Uh, and I wonder the reason why you don't talk to God because you don't know him. Well, oh boy. Well, well watch out. Here it comes. Any reason why you don't know him because you're trying to get to him in another means. And Jesus said you're a thief and a robber. Mm. Now, this is not me. And this is just the Holy Spirit telling you what Jesus said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me go back to the reading the word. All right. Uh, but you need you need to turn away from fables and turn back to the truth. Jesus is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Oh, man. OK. Uh, but uh, but look, look, look what he said. But be watchful in all things. But be watchful in all things. Enduring affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Amen. Fulfill your ministry. You know, I, I'm so happy and proud of my sister Lisa because she has fulfilled one leg of her ministry. She got the, the word of the street off the ground and, and out there for people to see. Amen. You know, it doesn't matter how, how it is and if people like it or don't like it, whether it, it, it becomes successful or don't become successful, she fulfilled it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> uh, fulfill your ministry. It don't matter whether people like the song you sang. You, you're doing it because God gave it to you. Amen. God will reward you. Fulfill your ministry. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm just, let me. Let me, let me calm down. Let me calm down because I'm, I, 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 all right. Fulfill it. Fulfill your ministry. It is important for you to fulfill your ministry. And stop saying that you're too old. There's nothing for you to do. I have no way of doing anything. You need, to, you need to ask God. You need to talk to him. You need to figure out something. Somebody somewhere can, will listen to you. Amen. Amen. You need to tell them Jesus is coming. Prepare your heart. Check your heart. Yes. Check your heart. Mm -hmm. You need to tell your family members. You need to tell your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones. Check your heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. I hear Jackie McCullough. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check yes. <laughs> it. Check your heart. You better check your heart. You better check to see whether or not you in line with God. Come on now. You better check. Come on. Oh, wait, okay. Come on. You better check it. You better you, listen. Overflow Christian Center. Listen, when I get to heaven, and Jesus comes back, I get to heaven, I'm going to look for y'all. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to look for you. Yes. And I, I, I don't, I want, I, when I go and I, I, I want to be able to find you. Oh my God, I want to be able to find you. I want to be able to find you. I want to, I don't want the Lord to say, well, you know, no, he, he's not here. Mm. Mm. She's, she's not here. Have mercy of my okay. All right. Uh, and, 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 let, me, let me go to Second Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 3, and, and it says this: it says, uh, knowing this first. <laughs> oh my god, knowing this first, the scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? Now, now let, let, let's be honest here. Let's just let's, let's be honest. Uh, my God in heaven. Let's, let's, just, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Let's just be honest here. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, the church have been saying that Jesus is coming for a very long time, for hundreds of years. I, I know my grandmother, she used to talk about her father used to say it and, and they father and they father. And, and to be honest and truthful with you, uh, the last days, 
the last days have been when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of, the day of Pentecost. Because Joel said, in the last days, yeah. the, the Spirit of the Lord will be poured out and, and, and it shall baptize you and you shall speak with other tongues. And, and, and 120, y'all remember over there in the book of Acts chapter 2, it, it, it talks about uh, them being filled with the Holy Spirit. That designated the last days. So that's about 2,000 years ago. We've been in the last days. Now, if, you, if you've been following this series, because we've been doing this series for, for some months now, you, you'll realize that the days, you remember we talked about the days one day, two, you know, you, you remember the days. We, we've been in this dispensation of time for two days now or 2,000 years. And so, so, so you know, uh, we've been talking about it for the last 2,000 years. And, and Apostle Paul was looking for Jesus coming. I mean, they were looking for Jesus to appear. And, and, and so, but the problem with that is, and you know, um, is that there are prophetic prophecies that tell you about the last days. And, and I, and I want to share a, just a couple of them with you uh, before we get back into the events and we get back over into Revelation. Uh, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 4, four through 7, uh, it, it, it says this. Uh, it says, it says, since you were, you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east. Now, this is God telling Israel. He's telling them, he says, you know, you, you've been scattered abroad. You've been, you've been, you've been, you, you, you know, you've been in captivity and you, you know, y'all been scattered. He says, but I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. And, and I will, I will say to the north, give them up and to the south. Uh, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I have created my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. God is saying, and you know, listen, I'm going to gather y'all back together. Jeremiah, go with me. Go with me to Jeremiah 23. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 23. So Isaiah, if you look in your Bible, is Isaiah and then is Jeremiah. So one book over, one book over from Isaiah is Jeremiah. And, and you will see uh, I, Isaiah was a prophet before God. And so is Jeremiah. Jeremiah is another prophet. But God, uh, God help my soul. Jeremiah is saying this. Jeremiah 23, verse 7. He says, therefore, the days are coming. I still hear pages in, 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 the, in, the, in the house. So I'm, I'm going to wait on them. I'm going to wait because it's important. It's important. It's important. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah 23, verse 7. Verse seven, you got it. All right, praise the Lord. All right, it says, therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, but as the Lord, but as the Lord lives who brought up and led the descendants of the house of Israel from the north country and from all the countries where I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. God is saying this. He's saying this to Jeremiah. Jeremiah tell Israel that they're not going to talk about what I did in Egypt anymore. And yeah, I know that I told them to tell your descendants and every descendants after them, but I'm going to do a greater miracle than this. A greater miracle than splitting the Red Sea. A greater miracle than, than, than doing something out of Egypt and bringing you and the plagues and all of those other things. Israel has been scattered across the world. And what I'm going to do, God is saying this, God telling Jeremiah, what, God, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my children back together so they can dwell in their own land. Amen. My God in heaven. So this is a prophetic. 
prophetic thing. Then Jesus went over over there, and I can't go to all of them, but Jesus said this over there in Matthew. I think it's uh, Matthew 24, uh, maybe Luke 11. Um, uh, he, he talks about the fig tree. He says, uh, watch the fig tree, for the fig tree is a, is a type of Israel. Is a type, is a type and shadow of Israel. He says, watch the, watch the fig tree. When they begin to bud, you'll know that the end is coming. The son of man is on his way. When they begin to bud, you'll know that uh, it, it's, it's almost time. It's almost a wrap. Yeah. Well, 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 this took place. Yeah. This took place. Uh, there, there, there's another scripture that says, oh, my God, I think it's in Jeremiah as well. And he says, uh, and, and, and I don't have the scripture right here ready for me. But uh, he says, he says, uh, can a can a nation or a country be done in one day? Well, that's exactly what God did for Israel uh, over in 1948. In 1948, this happened. He brought all of Israel back together. In 1948, this event happened. And now you don't have to take my word. You can Google it, look it up. You can, you can look, search it on YouTube. You know, the United Nations, they all came together in 1948. And um, in May of 1948, and they declared that Israel will be in their own country. Oh, my God. This is after the Holocaust. This is after all of that stuff. They, they had their own Nation. God gave them back their nation. Uh, that's when the olive tree start budding. That's a major event to watch. Now, 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 Mark Twain, he, he went through the land before that. And, and he says he, he made a comment. He says, oh, Israel, who would ever want to dwell here? Is desolate. Mm -hmm. There's nothing here. It's nothing but desert. Nothing will grow here. Well, the reason why nothing will grow is because God said, as long as the children of Israel is not inhabited Israel, it will be barren. Mm -hmm. But when the children return, it shall bring forth its fruit. Now, when you look at Israel, you'll see that it, it, it is absolutely budding. Mm -hmm. They have grapes, vines all over the uh, uh, oasis in the desert, they call it. They, they, there's fruit in agriculture. There's apples and plums and pears. It's, everything is growing like abundantly, even apricots. Every tree imaginable is growing right there in Israel. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And it, 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 it is all prophecy. I, I can't get into all of it, but, you know, let me tell you, you have to watch Israel. Come on. It's the key. <laughs> it's the key. My God. So 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 we went through that. I, I'm, I'm just letting you know that now is the time for us to really start talking about the last days. Yeah. Because they're the prophetic of 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 Israel coming back together was major on the clock and timetables of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God in heaven. Uh, just in, and, and I, I, before I, I go into other things, uh, well, uh, let, let me get here. But we, we, we went into, we told you about the church age and then the rapture happening. We, we discussed that. We told you about uh, um, uh, the, the church going to heaven. We talked about the crystal sea being a church. We talked about uh, um, uh, um, how they worship God. And, 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 and remember last week, don't break the wave. Don't break the wave of glory. When you hear somebody else blessing the Lord, you join in with them. Amen. Bless the Lord with them because in heaven, everybody, 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 every voice is heard blessing God. Whether you can sing or not sing, whether you're good or not good. You, you Listen, uh, uh, whether your voice is clear or not clear, you are heard blessing the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. So then we talked about how in uh, the seals were open. We talked about the Antichrist and, and him being the uh, on the white horse. And, and there was not Christ. He has a bow. He's have deception. And, and so and then we talked about the uh, World War Three mm -hmm. and how they all came and they was rushing to the to the battle gates and how the 144. We're going to pick up there what 144,000, 144,000. Very important. Very important, very important. They have a very important ministry. 
Uh, but so many people think that the 144,000 are, the, are the elected ones that only go to heaven, and that's not the truth. Somebody say, that's not the truth. That's, that's not, not the, the truth. truth. That is not the truth. Uh, 144,000 going to heaven. And I said, all these billions of people, and God only won 144,000? Really? That's sad. That's sad. That's, that's pathetic. That's pathetic for anyone to teach such erroneous uh, 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 doctrine, for you to teach that you should be ashamed of yourself, Amen. and for you to even believe that you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I speak this to your shame. Don't, 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 don't you let the devil trick you like that. Yes. Jesus, have mercy on my Come God. On. Uh, but uh, listen, um, I was just listening to the news in Armenia. Uh, uh, you, you know, the, the, the s <laughs> Armenia is, uh, is fighting with Turkey. And, and, and so, um, uh, and our, our Turkey is invading Armenia, and Armenia is a Christian nation, and, and they're coming in and they're trying to uh, take over their land. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I, I was looking and I was like, my God. And then it realized, it dawned on me that, that Turkey is Persia. You know, in, 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 in biblical times, Turkey is Persia. And then as I was watching the news, I saw that who was helping Turkey invade uh, uh, Ar Armenia, but Russia. <laughs> and who was helping them? In, uh, 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 Ethiopia. In Libya. Well, this is the same coalition that, that, that you see in Scripture over in uh, chapter 38 that's going to invade Russia. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you can see how everything is starting to fit just like a puzzle that they all coming together as a, this coalition that's going to try to come into Israel. Mm -hmm. They already started with Armenia. Right now, in our time, living right now, they're already starting to take land from Armenia. Mm. And Russia is helping Turkey. Because they have this coalition together. Yes. Good God from glory. <gasps> but we're going to move on because we can't go back over that stuff anymore. Um, Ezekiel 9, this is a, the 144,000. Uh, we told you about the, them rushing out, the men of Israel, when the battle, when, when Russia and his correlation, uh, the, um, uh, Magog and Gog and, and, and Tubog, and them rushed to, to, to take over. Uh, this is right after the rapture happens. This is right after the Antichrist is revealed. Uh, Russia gets into his head and his heart to run into, um, um, into, into Israel to take over Israel. And, and God stops it. But, but before then, uh, Israel, all the young men in Israel are rushing, well, all the men, not just young, but all the men in Israel are rushing to the borders to defend their nation. And, and there's four angels, and one with an ink horn begins, uh, uh, he, 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 we pick it up here in verse uh, Ezekiel 9 and 1. He says, this. he says, then he called in my hearing with a loud voice saying, let, let those who have charge over the city draw near with a deadly weapon in their hand. And, and suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faced the north each with his battle axe in his hand. So the angels was about to help him, right? Yeah. And it says, one man uh, among them was clothed with linen and had a writer's ink horn at his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of, the, of God of Israel had gone up from the cherubims where it had been to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man with the linen who had the writer's ink horn at his side and the Lord said to him go through the midst of the city through the midst of Jerusalem and put a mark on the forehead of the men Revelation chapter 7 reveals more picks up the story and he says and after these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth uh, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth on the sea or on the trees. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having a seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the angels to, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth, 
the seas or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000. Now, now these 144,000 men, they were virgin men. They didn't, they wasn't married. They was only focused in on the work of the ministry. Now, if you really read throughout Ezekiel, you'll find out that God was kind of, he, he, he was upset with Israel and he says, come and look, his, uh, Ezekiel, look at their abomination. And he said, look in their secret places. They think I don't see it. They think that I don't know what they're doing in secret. And then he showed them one abomination after that other abomination after the other abomination and he said and they kept saying and the Lord doesn't see us the Lord doesn't see us the Lord doesn't see us and God get get angry with that he was very angry you'll read it read it on your own take some time turn off the TV and read the uh, read 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 what's going on with with, with God in, in Israel so he chooses a hundred and forty four thousand that refuse to get corrupted by any sin Good God from glory. Oh, my God. They'll follow the lamb wherever he goes, the Bible yes. says. Whew, man, oh, God. So they, the 145,000, their ministry is to take up the assignment of the church. Why do they need to take up the assignment of the church? Because the church is gone. Yes. The church has been raptured. Uh, the fullness of the Gentiles have come in. We've been raptured. We're up with God in heaven. Right. We're 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 the ones who's worshiping God. We are the glass sea mingled in fire. We're worshiping God. Yeah. The hundred and forty four thousand has been chosen to take up this ministry and evangelize the world. Goodness gracious. <laughs> mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, OK, let, let us go. Uh, We, we told you that the 144,000 there, their missions and their, their, their assignment is so great. And they does such a good job in, 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 in whatever. Let, let, let's go back to Revelations. Um, oh, my God. What was that? Revelations uh, 14. Let's go to Revelation 14. Now, this is because, the, see, Revelations is like this. You, you, you'll see all the seals. You have seven seals on, on the, on, uh, uh, I was about to say the Bible. Uh, you have seven seals on the book that Jesus took out of the hand of the Father. Though no man can come and take it out, no angel, nobody, nobody in heaven and earth can take that, nobody can look on it, but Jesus was able to take it out. And he began to break the seals. And as he began to break the seals, things began to happen on earth. The breaking of the seals permitted the things that had happened on earth to happen. Okay, now we didn't get to the book, we didn't even open the book to read what's in the book, we just breaking seals. Okay, so now, 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 now the thing is, is that when, this, when all of this is happening, when all of this is happening, uh, um, um, when, when, when the whole, uh, 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 the seals are being broken, uh, the seals uh, is, is basically the span of the whole seven years. Mm -hmm. It's just not w w one, one, one right after the other in, in, a, in the course of, of, of two or three seconds, but it is being broken in the course of the whole seven years of, of Revelation. But um, look at here, look at 14. It says this, he says, then I looked and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion and, and with him 144,000 having his father's name written in their forehead. And I heard a voice from heaven like the voice of many waters and like the voice of the loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harps playing their harps. They sang as it was a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn the song except the, the, the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. Uh, these are the ones who were, were not defiled with women. Uh, they, are n they, are, they are virgins. They are the ones who, who follow the lamb wherever he goes. Uh, these were redeemed from among the men, being the first fruit to God as the lamb and to the lamb and in their mouth was the was found no deceit for they are without fault before the throne of god now now you said the bible says they're they the first fruit so so they evangelized israel 
they evangelized the world. And that's why it, it, uh, Zechariah, uh, it, it talked about that, that every, every man shall grab hold every, from every one Jewish person, uh, one man shall grab hold of his sleeve and say, take us with you. Because uh, they believe this ministry. Amen. They believe this ministry. Uh, uh, let's go. Uh, Revelations chapter six. Now we're going to get into some new, new stuff. Revelation chapter six. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Let me just get something to. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 3. It says this. He says, when he had opened the second seal, you know, we, we read this, and when we read, opened the second seal, I heard the, the second living creature saying, come and see. And another, and an, another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to, to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And the people should kill one another and there was given to him a great sword. Now, the great sword is a great um, a weapon of mass destruction. You know, in, in the Bible days, a, a sword was, was a weapon of mass destruction. But uh, in our days, we, like I said before, it is tanks and missiles and, and guns and whatever else you have you out there in the military. Um, and so they have great, so, so the, this is the war. But, but also it says, that he is to take peace from the earth. Mm -hmm. He's taking peace from the earth. He's taking peace from the, from, from, from the people for, so that the people, not him, so that the people will kill one another. Mm -hmm. He's not killing anybody, but the, he's taking the peace from the earth so that he, so that they can kill one another. Oh my God! And, and you you can see that you you can see that right here in America, yeah. well, you know. And, and and I'm telling you, you can say, well, well, they doing that now. Well, yeah. they are, but not like it's going to happen. Yeah, uh -huh. See, see, you, you you'll see. Remember, he he he's taking peace from the earth. Uh, whew, man, oh man, oh man. Uh, there's unrest everywhere. All over the world, even here, right here in America. Just last night, they had a, a big a rally, and they, somebody got stabbed, and because they would, because they were protesting, and they didn't like it, it was a big fight. Peace is being taken from the earth, but it, it is not yet because the church is still here. The riders are not here. The four horsemen are not here. This is what we're reading. We're reading about the four horsemen. We, we, they're not here. Look at seal number three. Look, Revelation chapter six, verse five. This is, this is uh, uh, Revelation chapter six, verse five. It says this. And when he had, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and I behold a, a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales yeah. in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quarter of wheat for a den Daenerys and three quarts of barley for a Daenerys and do not harm the oil and the wine. Man, oh man. So the red rider, the, fairy, the fiery red rider is taking peace from the earth. Uh, the, 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 the black rider is causing famine. So, so the black rider is causing famine because now a, da a Daenerys was in the biblical times that this was written, a Daenerys was a day's wage. So he's saying that a loaf of bread will cost you during this time a day's wage. Now, now, now I want you to see something. Uh, see what he's having in his hand. He have a, a scale in his hand. It's not that there's a shortage of food. It's just that the people that have control of it have unjust weights. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, 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 so it calls famine for the poor. It, it also caused famine in this region that they just had. That they just had this war. 
because after war there is there is always a shortage or famine or whatever that goes on, and especially in that land. But here, all, but it's just not just there. It's 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 globally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so think about it, uh, which will further cause peace to leave the earth. Mm -hmm. You go to the store and and they tell you your that bread is a hundred and twenty dollars. But your children are hungry. But you're hungry and you need you need something to eat. And you 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 would want to hurt somebody and quickly. Because I know some people I ain't going to talk about Leticia, but I know some people that that will not. They just want if, if it's two, three cent more than it was a week or two ago. We'll have a fit. But but, you know, I'm just saying this is what this writer is coming to do. So you have one. You have one. The, the first writer who is the Antichrist. He's coming, deceiving the people. He's pretending like he's a man of peace. You have the second writer who's coming. He's going to create World War Three and he's going to take peace from the earth so the people can kill themselves. Uh, you have the third writer who's coming and he's coming to bring famine. He's coming with unjust weights. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Oh, my God. But but notice, notice something. Notice that even this rider, this black rider, notice that he, uh, Jesus, y'all got to get at this. Notice that he has limitations. Notice that he was not prevented to hurt, to harm the oil and the wine. Now, in biblical days, the oil in the wine it, it symbolized abundance. So there's there's plenty, mm -hmm. but he's just not allowing it to be uh, uh, shared evenly. Mm -hmm. Come on this writer is not allowing things to be to be. He, he don't care if you are dying of hunger. He come with an unjust scale in his hand. Who, 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 whose favor is he in? Certainly not the people that want to serve God. Right, that's true. Whew, my God in heaven. Uh, I mean, you, you, you got you to gotta, you gotta understand this. The unjust weight, and God said the unjust weight is an abomination to him. But this is Ryder, he, he's doing. Now, all of this is in the plan of the Antichrist. All Satan is orchestrating, and he's planning all of these things is, is because it, it promotes his man to be the one to seem like he has peace. He's for everybody, and he's for everything. So he's, de he's deceiving. Remember, he's the first rider out the gate. So when he comes and then, then he brings an end to certain things and uh, I'm going to make a, a covenant with Israel that nobody else will attack Israel and we'll uh, seven years. Nobody else going to Israel going to gobble up that that covenant with them, that that treaty with them. And then he's going to. Yes. You know, nobody. And then he'll he'll he'll. Oh, no. Y'all can't do this. Let, let's bring the prices down. Let's do he. He's pretending he's deceiving the people. So that the people can accept him. Oh my God in heaven. Okay. Uh, let's go on to the fourth, fourth rider. Let's go to the fourth rider. And when he had opened his. Uh, <clears throat> okay. When he, had, when he had opened the fourth seal. I heard the voice of the four living creatures say. Come and see. So I looked and behold. A pale horse. And the name of him who sat on it was death. And Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger. Uh, let me let you know, Satan do not run hell. Satan do not own hell. Uh, uh, that, that's, that's a lie from the pit. That, that's a lie uh, that's conjured up in the pit of Satan's mind. It is, he does not run hell. He don't do it. Uh, look, look, look at, look, look at, 
uh, he, he is Hades, that's Hades' place. Hades is a spirit. Mm -hmm. His place is called, he's, ha hell is named after Hades. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Listen to this. Uh, go with me to just, just Isaiah chapter 14 and 9. Uh, let, let, let me just uh, uh, read this to you really quickly. Uh, I, I just, it, you, you got to know. See, see. God in his mercy and his loving kindness, he says, I don't want anybody to be lost. Amen. Isaiah chapter 14, verse nine. God don't want anybody to be lost. He don't want anybody to go to hell. He don't want, the hell was designed for Satan and his angels. That's, right. That's what it was designed for. Look at this. Uh, he says this. He says, hell from beneath is exciting about you. Look, look, Hades is excited at your coming. Good God from glory. Don't go. Disappoint him. He says, hell from beneath is excited about your coming, about you, to meet you at your coming. It, he stirs up the, de the dead for you and all the chief ones of the earth. It has, it, it has risen up from their thrones and all the kings of the nations. They shall all speak and say to you, have you also? Amen. The, the, when he meets you, there is no getting away from him. He welcomes you into hell. He stirs up the dead for you, waiting for you. Yeah, come on in. Come on, come on, people. It, it, it is not. Uh, man, I got it. Man. Uh, I, I, I just want you to, I just, is that? Okay, I got two more minutes. Uh, I don't want to get into this, but all right. You have to know that Satan is not in charge of hell. That's right. You have to know that, that he has never been to hell. There is no escape in hell. He don't have a key where he can go in and out. So, so Hades is riding alongside of death. <laughs> death always proceed Hades because first, you, uh, man, oh man, oh man. Okay, let me, I'm not just gonna, fair place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That's what the word says. He's gonna go and receive you unto himself. So, so don't, don't disappoint, don't I believe. I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, and I believe that you raised him from the dead, and I believe that Jesus is coming again. So, Father, because I confess that, I'm now yours. I'm born again according to your word, and so now I'm your responsibility, and I'm asking you to send me to a church preaching and teaching the word of God so that I can grow up thereby, and I can be pleaser. I can be pleasing you with my life, and I can become an overcoming a victorious Christian in Jesus name. Amen. Father, I thank you for these that have made that confession of faith. I thank you for these that have received you as your Lord and your Savior. And so Father, I thank you. Now if you said that prayer and if you meant, meant it in your heart, I would like for you to type in the chat that says, listen, Pastor Marshall, I received Jesus. I said the prayer, I am now saved. And, or go to our website. If you're looking at it later on, uh, on on Facebook or YouTube, go to our website. And I want you to go to overflowchristiancenter.org. And then I need you to hit uh, the contact us information and fill out your information on that. Amen. Because Jesus is coming, ladies and gentlemen, sooner than what we realize. Amen. And we'll get into all of that soon. Amen. We bless you. We thank you. And we thank you for being here with us and viewing our live. You could have been any place else, but you took the time yes. to stay here and be with us and hear what thus says the Lord through Overflow Christian Center. Amen. So we thank you again. God bless you.